man, I, rather than prime things, why don't we just talk? And then, uh, I think this is, this is super helpful to help people. Um, because it, it, when we can talk with the actual person involved, it, it lets us see it from their perspective. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally understand. Yeah, man. So, okay. So you're gonna have to forgive me for this, but you pronounce your first name Saleh? Sala. Sala. Okay. Um, so Sala, tell me, man, uh, thank you, first of all, for coming on the channel. And uh, tell me about you, bro. Well, um, number one, before I, before I tell you about me, I, I want to tell you how much I admire your channel because it really helped me a lot. Um, I don't think I would, I would be here to talk to you today if it wasn't for me watching your daily, um, you know, your daily videos and your... Um, <clears throat> How you actually describe um, what happened in that video, why it happened, and what could have happened. You know, um, that's number one. You know, I'm just, you know, a guy. I'm, I, when I grew up, I didn't have nothing to do with guns or violence or anything of that nature at all. Okay. Nothing, you know. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I went to work every day. Um, mm -hmm. Not expecting something like this would happen, you know. Not, Did you not... grow up in Virginia? Um, I grew up. I was actually born uh, overseas, and um, I lived in Virginia for probably fifteen, seventeen years, something like that. Ah, I mean, so it's so long enough at that point that Virginia has been home for a long time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so are you then a first generation American? Are your parents Americans who were living overseas, or are you a first generation American? Well, I'm not a first generation born American, but I am first generation um, naturalized citizen. My son uh, is a first generation American on both sides. Oh, very cool, man. That's awesome. Congratulations. So where's your background from? Do you mind me asking? Egypt. Egypt. Very cool, man. Welcome. And, and that's fantastic, man. So uh, how long have you been a self-defender? How long have you been carrying a firearm? Not long. Not long ago, um, I was uh, I started being a manager for Metro by T-Mobile, um, and then after a few incidents and stuff like that, I felt the need to, um, you know, to try to protect myself, and um, I I applied for my carry license, um, and I only had it for probably two years, not not even not even that long. You know, okay. Um, but I first, you know, started playing around with guns a little bit, you know, in my backyard. I live in the country. Um, you know, friends tried to teach me how to shoot. I didn't know how to shoot. I didn't know how to hold a gun. I didn't know nothing two years ago. Right. You wow. Know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even know how a gun works. I just knew that I should not be nowhere near a gun. <laughs> Okay. But a couple of years ago, you went and decided to get your Virginia license to carry. Yeah. Yep. And I bought my first weapon. Uh, and it's, it's, I'm so glad that I bought it. It's, I, I, you know, when I wanted to buy it, they, they offered me a bunch of weapons. And as soon as I held that weapon in my hand, I was like, this is the one. It's a Smith & Wesson um, shield, M&P shield. Okay. Um, the minute that I held it in my hand, I'm like, that's the one. You know? All right. I, I know people are going to ask if it was a shield in nine millimeter or 40. Nine. Nine millimeter. Okay. Um, can you tell me what ammo you were loaded in it? Yes. It was federal ammo, 150 grain, hollow point. Um, All the defender. micro HSTs? Yes. The 150 grain micro HSTs. Because I noticed, you. I think you only hit him with one, but boy, that one definitely made him reconsider his life choices. We'll, get, we'll oh, talk yeah. about it in a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and it's, I, uh, and I'm okay, so you're glad. carrying you're carrying strong sight on your hip. Yep. And what holster were you carrying in? Um, actually, it's not a brand that is known because remember, I don't know too much. I'm sure. not too involved in in weapons and holsters and stuff like that. So, it's a holster that I I tried a couple of holsters, and this one, it's it's like it's carbon fiber. Um, um, plated or something like that, but it felt so nice to have it because I had to learn how to adjust it and how to have the retain 
I didn't want too much pull. I wanted to be able to, you know, to pull it out, uh, to pull the gun out without having to fight with it. So right. I really don't, you know, it's it's a plastic holster that that grabs the gun, and at the same time, it's it's very um, um, tough as far as the material goes. I, I'm I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. Worked well for you on that day. So, yeah. um, so have you taken any other formal training other than your license to carry class? Absolutely not, except you. Okay. <laughs> so except for the daily lessons on the on the Ask yeah. main channel. Yeah, believe it or not, yes, I I'm telling you that. You know, I I used to watch your channel and watch the daily um, the daily videos, and then go home and practice. You know how I would actually, you know, interact if if I'm put in that kind of situation. And um, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna get into you know further ahead. But during that whole incident, you know, I I kept narrowing everything that you said before and what to do now I, I already disarmed him okay what am i gonna do next stuff like that it's it's all based on what you said in your videos man uh, all right let's talk about it man so so you weren't a big uh training junkie or anything like that just a, a regular not, not show your license to carry but you had your gun on you thank god for that so yeah. i saw your your other employee that was you know interacting so the guy comes in and you were coming out of the back of the store yeah and it seemed like you were not like this wasn't just another interaction for you because it seemed like at any rate from what I was watching on video, boy, you were ready when that guy pulled the gun out. Oh, yeah. I was so ready. I was doing some business in the back and um, I'm very, very aware. I think I do have a good sense of security. Um, okay. I'm aware of my surroundings. You know, I always watch who's coming in, who's going out. What noises am I hearing if a door opens, if a door closes? And that's what I heard. I heard a door open. Okay. The first thing I did was I looked in my, um, there's a, um, a screen in the back. I was lucky that there was a screen in the back. I was able to see that there was someone. They were wearing a hoodie. At that point, I didn't see that they were wearing a mask. They were covering. Their yeah. yeah. So I let her do the interaction. Of you know normal thing if you go into a um a cell phone store, hello, welcome to the cell phone store. you know how can we help you and then I came outside. I already know what's happening, but I don't want to believe it, you know okay, so did you notice that he had his face covered at that point? Yes, once I went outside, I did notice that you know he he was covering his face, but i I felt maybe he was cold, to be honest with you. I, I, I was not expecting it. Right. You're like, wait a minute. What does that mean? Even though it's May in Virginia and it's not cold outside. I know. I know. And I'm yeah. still giving him all benefit of doubt. I'm sure, still sure. To myself, you know, he may be just, you know, cold. I, I don't know. Maybe he was coughing outside. I don't know. So I asked him specifically, remove your hoodie. And I already started to put my hand on the weapon yeah okay and so then he threw a gun yeah well he didn't notice he did not expect me to have a weapon mm. um according to the police they said that he did ask he he yelled give me everything you got but i didn't hear that okay um what i did hear what i did see i saw him go in his pocket and pulled the weapon as soon as i saw the end of the weapon before the nozzle cleared his pocket that's when i that's when i drew that's when you said it's go time yep and according to the police i'm not an expert on this but they said my reaction time was military grade yeah super snappy bro i i haven't timed it yet i'll time it when i do the narration for it which i'm doing this week but i was like Wow, he was quick on the gun. Like, man, you got after it. Yeah, they asked me if I did have any military training, and I told them no. But I, I don't know how it happened. I just, my instant, I saw the, um, the uh, magazine side of the weapon, of his weapon, and I drew. And by the time I, I lifted up, I already shot my first shot. Mm. But I was so nervous 
I didn't aim. Yeah, you missed him, huh? Yeah. But then I started to calm myself down so I can focus. Yeah. So because as soon as you shot, that FIBSA factor, right? That fudge I'm being shot at, he dropped and got behind the counter. Yep. And then I'm like, okay, now I have the edge. Yeah. Hunter okay. or rabbit, right? You became the hunter. Yep. And then I'm like, okay, well, now I have, you know, I have a girl in the store. I see her on the floor. That was my first and only priority. I'm like, she doesn't have a weapon. I know she doesn't. Okay, now she's depending on me to, to, you know, to make sure that she stays alive. Now, the, uh, the whole situation and the reason why I wasn't focused, it just happened to be May 7th, sorry, May 6th. I, I think that happened on May 6th. Was the, first month, was the first day of the most holy month of, for Muslims, which is Ramadan. Okay. Yeah, so it was the first day of Ramadan, so you're fasting. I was fasting. And not only that, I didn't sleep for, uh, I think, 36 hours because I had to wake up in the middle of the night to eat something and then spend time with family and then go to work. So we, we're not, I knew I wasn't going to sleep until maybe sunset, which is, you know, around seven o'clock at that time. Wow. So you're smoked, you're freaking tired, you're hungry, you're thirsty. Because yep. I know uh, most Muslims, I know they won't drink either during a fast. It's a dry fast, right? No, it, it's 100% nothing. No drinks. Yeah, yeah. I, I do vape, so I'm lacking the nicotine. You know, it's it, it's a whole, it, it, it came at the worst time. Like, if he had come in any other time, it would have been a whole different story. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but, you know, I think that's a lesson, man. The fight comes at you when you're at your worst, you know. Uh, yeah. You don't get to be on your best day. It may be on a day where you're sleep deprived and you're fasting. And, you know, you're distracted and all those things. So, you know, given all that, that adds even more depth to how good you were that day, man. Um, yeah. I'm, it's, it was a crazy situation. But I did, once I fired the first shot, I heard him fire a shot. Yeah. Um, and then he went down. And then I went up. I'm like, okay, now I have the edge. Let me fire again. But what I didn't realize is that my gun jammed. I was going to ask because it sure looked like it, it, you had a malfunction. Yep. So when I went up for the second shot, I had a clear headshot and the gun did not fire. Wow. Do you know what kind of malfunction it had? Was it? Uh, yes. Tell because me about it. How, because of how nervous I was and because of the reason I pull, I drew the gun while I was firing, the, the, um, the uh the i can't remember what it's called the the actual the case uh, yeah the case the casing yeah the casing got stuck uh you had a failure to eject yeah so i tried to fire it didn't fire i knew i had a jam i jumped back down i cleared the jam right away and then i went back up to the second to to the end of the counter i fired a shot by the time i fired the shot he shot another round mm mm-hmm. mhm he was aiming for my head. All right. So um, I went back to the – so I kept switching back and forth so he doesn't know where I'm at. Yes, I, I noticed that. I was wondering if you did that on purpose, if you're going, I got to move to a different spot. And, yeah, and I didn't want else. him to know or guess where I was. Mm, excellent work, man. Yeah, so it was a couple of times that I came out on one side, and then I kept switching. Yes. It, I knew he was going to – he was going to think that I was going to come out on the other side. So I came out from the same side that I came out the first time. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I kept, I kept doing that in order to make sure that um, he doesn't notice that I am coming out on different sides and he doesn't try to aim for me, you know? Um, the- so then he finally popped up and you actually got a good center mass, oh, but yeah. a side view of him. Yeah. I, he popped up. I had. I came out perfect. I can hear him actually moving. So I knew that he was going to jump up. By the time he jumped up, I had a clear shot. Boom, bam. It actually hit him on the hip, on the upper hip. Okay. Okay. Now, I was aiming, of course, for, for you know, for the mass in order to yes. stop yeah, the yeah. threat. Um, once he was down... I just I stopped firing. 
smart. Okay. But his gun was still in his hand. I told him if yeah. he if he moves, if I, I I yelled at him, if you move a finger, I have a clear headshot. Wow. Yeah. So that's I told him let go of the gun, let go of the gun. My only concern was to disarm him. Yes. Okay. And he did. He dropped the gun. Yeah, he dropped the gun, and he kept calling. I told him, don't move, don't move, don't move. And now I'm trying to secure um, the worker in the store. So I started moving to the right in order to have her get up so I could, she can be hiding behind me. You know? I didn't, want, I didn't want her to hide. I didn't want her to get up and be vulnerable. I didn't know if he had another weapon, if he had an accomplice outside, or anything of that nature. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So then he decides to get up and climb, you know, crawl out the door and ran off. Oh, yeah. I was shocked. Yeah, I, I mean, shocked. you know, after a while, it's like I, I see this all the time. The guys, like, it, it's painful. It hurts. You know, oh, no, I'm down. And then they go, man, I got to get out of here because the pain yeah. starts to kind of wear off a little bit. And then they hobble off and, and, you know, go run off. How long did it take the cops to catch him? Oh, he he went outside. He ran probably about, I think, 50 feet and he collapsed. Oh, okay, so so not far at all. No, not far. Not far at all. I mean, it, it, it was a major hit. Um, as far as I know, I don't I don't know all the information about his situation, but I do know that he had to stay in the hospital for a very long time. Mm. Had to get a lot of treatment. Um and that he was thankful that he was alive. Yeah, well he should be. And obviously, you know, do you know, uh, I'm sure they prosecuted him. Has, has that gone through its whole thing? Has he been convicted in sentence? Uh, the, um, as far as I know, he, he already made a deal with the district attorney and all of that. So I think it's, it's supposed to be, um, you know, finalized in um, the last day of March or something, the last week of March. Okay, so he'll go and, and plead guilty and get his sentence and all that stuff in March. Okay. Yeah. Now, the only other thing that really was a, a tough situation in, in that whole thing is that my wife was eight months pregnant. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, you know, you're going, man, I got to get home for my baby and my wife here. Yeah. She was eight months pregnant. If I didn't if I didn't make it out of that situation, I'd have never seen him. Well, and I think you did a really good job, too, watching the aftermath. You know, you didn't go and immediately chase him. No. You, you know, you went and secured the firearm, yep. uh, which I think was great. And, and, you know, I say that all the time, you know, get that gun and secure it. So then that way it's out of the way. And you also consoled your coworker. You know, she was yep. obviously really having a hard time. Once that threat was over, you spent some time with her. Then you guys get on the phone with 911. <laughs> now, eventually you did go out there and, and, and leave the store a little bit. Was there a particular reason you chose that? Yes. And that is due to what you also said in your videos. Now, I didn't want to go after him. He was gone out of the store. The threat is over. I don't care about it. Okay. But I secured the firearm. I had her go in the back. I secured the store. And I had her call 911. Everything is good. So I'm in a good, um, you know, good situation here. Everything is good in my, in my store. Everything is secured. I'm good. Yeah. I checked myself. I'm not, you know, bleeding, you know. Um, she's good. Cool. Uh, the store next door to us, he's a really cool guy and I worked with him a lot. So I went next door. I told him this just happened. I want you to shut your door. Do not allow any customers in because I didn't okay, know what was going to happen. Next. Okay. You know? Right. Sure. Yeah. Then I went, I wanted to make sure he didn't have an accomplice because most of the time situations like that, he is going to have an accomplice. So now I want to make sure everybody else outside is secure. So I looked to, to my left. I saw a uh, tow truck driver. I told him, are you okay? He said, yes, I heard what happened. I already called 911. I said, thank you. You know, he said, well, he ran down the street. He's, sit he's standing right there. He's actually down, down the street. I can see him. You know, I can see him down there. And I can see people going, you know, trying to help him out and, you know, trying to reach for him. And I'm. You know, the first thing is, you know, guys, this guy just shot some, you know, shot at the store and he he was involved in an armed robbery. Get away from him. You don't know. Yeah, what yeah. yeah so get off was, that guy. 
Yeah, I was yelling at them, move away from him, move away from him, move away from him. Okay? okay. Wait for the cops to get here. Wait for the cops to get here. Okay. And how long was the police response time? <laughs> long. Long. It took them probably 12 to 14 minutes. 12 to 14 get... minutes after a shots fired man yes. down call. Yes. Yes. So you're standing up for 12 to 14 minutes after, listen, there's a man, there's, there's a perp that's bleeding to death over here. Yes. And I'm not going to touch him, but I got a gun out on this guy. 12 minutes? <laughs> yes. Yes, wow. I'm not even exaggerating. And then when they showed up, I was standing outside. I wanted to make sure, you know, everything's secure. I'm still in shock, you know, the yeah. whole situation. So I saw the cop stop by him first. So I told the girl to wait outside. Don't come in the store. So now the cops are here, so she's safe. I told her, wait outside. When the cops come in, let them know that I'm not armed and my firearm is in my holster. It's in the corner of the store. And I laid down on the floor face first like airplane. Okay. Yeah. Because I knew that they were coming. They were going to come in hot. Well, I mean, they want to secure the scene, right? Obviously, they don't yeah. want to get shot either. Yeah. And how? Uh, what kind of reception did you get from responding officers? It was awesome. It was. It was. It was. You know, it was crazy. It was awesome. It was unexpected. Um, they walked in. Um, they were definitely hot. Guns drawn. Yeah. Obviously, um, I, I had my metro shirt. You know, like you seen on the video, and um, the. They asked me, who are you? I said, I'm the manager. He said, did you shoot that guy? I said, yes. They said, well, get up. We got, they got me a seat. They had me sit down. Um, I, I don't remember if it was... Uh, the officer came in. I, I don't know what his rank is, but he said, did, did this just happen? He said, well, good job. You did good. You know, he said, uh, is that is that his gun in the holster? I said, no, that's my gun. He said, OK. I said, well, his gun is behind the counter. He said, wow, you disarmed him? I said, yes, I disarmed him and I kept the gun. So they were shot. But the funny part is that I heard, I knew I heard at least two shots. Uh -huh. But there was no magazine in the weapon. Huh. OK. And not only that, but. The, obviously, you know, the Norfolk Police Department, they kept my weapon and they kept his weapon um, to do forensics on it and all of that. They asked me how many shots did I think I fired? Because after this whole situation happened, I actually, when I went outside, I popped my clip and I counted how many bullets did I have in it. OK, so I knew that I fired five shots. OK. Because I didn't know how many I fired, so I wanted to make sure how many did I actually fire. So yeah, how I many do I have left or whatever, yeah. Um, so I told him five. He said, well, how many do you think he fired? I said two, but he didn't have a magazine, so I'm guessing that he only had one in the chamber. He said, well, he actually fired six. Yeah. So he fired six? He fired six rounds, and he took the magazine with him. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. Wow. Craziness. So he fired six and you fired five? Yep. Wow, man. Well, you did a great job, man. So how long did they did they return your firearm to you? Uh, I kept calling them every single day, literally, until they got tired of me. And they handed me the weapon six months later. <laughs> Jeez, six months later. Okay, well, I mean, I get it, right? It's part of a criminal investigation and all that stuff. <laughs> Man, come on, give me my gun. So did you did you go without for that time, or did you just go buy a new oh, one? No, 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 no. After that happened, and they released me from the uh, special operations unit, um, I went home. Obviously, I couldn't sleep. Um, I left my car at the at the store, obviously, because, you know, they took me. To, I left my car there. Yeah. And... The next day, I, I got an Uber. I told him to take me to my car. I got the car, and I drove to the gun shop. The gun shop, was, the gun shop was closed. I got there an hour before they opened. That's how much how nervous I was. Yeah. As soon as they opened, I walked in. I started, you know, telling them, hey, I want another weapon and this, you know. But they can tell that I was nervous. Sure. 
And that made them nervous. Oh, boy. Okay. So they're like, okay, well, this guy's buying a weapon. And he looked very nervous. Like, I was yeah, shaking. super nervous and weird, yeah. Yeah. So did they not sell well, it to you? No. Here's the cool part. Um, I, I think he was the manager of the store. I told him, look, I'm, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I think I can trust you telling you this. Maybe so you know why I'm nervous. This is what happened last night, and I was the one involved. The whole store went in silence, and then everybody came and made sure I got help. They grabbed me all the holsters. They made sure I'm good. They were, you know, flying with it. They are like, well, this is the best scenario for why we actually sell weapons. Right. Is, you know, yeah, this is what we do it for, right? Yeah. So, uh, and they tried to get me a holster for that weapon because then I picked, um, I picked them, um, the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, uh, 2 the 9mm, okay. the big gun. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I got the combat. I, 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 I chose the combat, um, the smaller size, not the full size. Mm -hmm. And um, they kept trying to find me the right holster, and I, I didn't like it. So they're like, okay, well, you can buy whatever holster you want. So I figured, you know, I'll go back to the original supplier that I bought my first holster from. Yeah. Um, an online... Uh, online supplier because that's the holster that I like so they're like well cool no problem but I don't want you to carry your weapon your weapon without a holster so here's one for me until you get one. Oh wow cool so they really helped me a lot and then once I got the holster online and then I, I came back to the store and I gave them the holster wow they man did. that sounds like great stuff man so so let me ask you, what are your takeaways? What do you think your big lessons are from this incident? Um, well, number one, I'm, I'm thankful to God that I'm still alive. I'm still here to Amen. talk about. Amen. It could have been much worse for me. You know, I'm, I'm, I am a law-abiding citizen. Um, I'm not going around, you know, doing crazy stuff. I'm, I'm in my place of work. I'm trying to feed my family. So. I'm glad that I made the decision to carry um, because a lot of people kept telling me, well, it could have been another robber. He could have just came in, took the money and left and you're good to go. I said, well, he how do you, you with a gun? He threatened yeah. you with a gun. I ah, said, you had you know? all the right to do what you did. Yeah. I mean, maybe if I didn't have a gun, maybe he could have shot me and I, I would have been another victim, you know? Yep, you did the, you know, you had the the skills to do it. So I'm glad you were carrying. Yeah. Um, then, of course, I, I kidded. I was, I was then paranoid. You know, it took me a while to um, relax. It really changed my life. This, this incident really changed my life. Um, yeah, the emotional toll and the social toll and those things. It's a big deal, man. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not a, a really easy, um, it's not like you see it on TV or you see it in your videos, really, honestly. It's it's a lot more emotional, a lot more stuff involved. And, you know, I just shot somebody, you know? Yeah. Well, and uh, you got to go relive it again because the police want you to talk about it. And they want you to talk about it again. And they want you to talk about it again. And then you got to go get a new gun. And it goes through your mind. And you walk through to work the next time. And you think that's where he was. And So the emotional toll is pretty significant, man. It is. It is. I was very paranoid um for a while after that and then i'm st i started to cool down now everything you know is cool i don't you know um i still carry of course <laughs> and um but i i try to be aware more of my surroundings i don't feel like i'm you know uh in my position now where where i work i, I don't feel like i'm targeted like i was targeted in um in the cell phone business of course you know um i've seen a lot of armed robberies at metro's pcs stores a lot of them yes yes um and i wanted to make sure that i'm not another name that's going to be in the paper that i you know that somebody is dead so i'm happy you know i i really i i don't even know like it's something that you don't think about until it actually happens, and then once it happens, you don't even know what to think. You know? Yeah. 
Um, but have you thought I am more about, glad, about taking some more classes? I did. I did think, and I want to take classes um, to actually better my aim. And um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm admitting it. I haven't been practicing like I should. I should uh, practice more, you know. Um, but it's been it's been crazy ever since that incident, you know. I bet, man. I, I tell you what, I have a couple of friends that are trainers in Virginia, okay? Okay. Um, that are that are high level, really great guys. Now, the ones that I would send you to, um, I'll tell you, my friend John Murphy from FPF Training teaches a fantastic class. It's a two day class, um, and he is mostly out of his home range in Culpeper, which is I think a couple hours from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I tell you what, I'm going to ask John, I bet you $20 if I, when I call John later today and I say, hey, John, my friend, uh, uh, you know, Salah needs a class and he's been in a defensive gun use can. Can you take care of him? He'll, it'll be on me, man. It, it'll be on him and, and you can just go train with him. Um, I got a couple other friends, Ashton Ray and Tim Chandler, um, 360 performance that teach as well, not too far from you. They taught my son a shotgun class. My son lives in Norfolk too with his wife. Yeah. Okay. His wife's in the Navy. So, um, and and so uh, I, if I get you a class, will you go? Yes. Awesome, man. OK, we'll get you one. And I will uh, I'll, I'll I know we've been talking over email and I'll get you one, you know, get with you those guys to be able to hook that up. Yeah, I really do appreciate it. And then, again, I, I know I said I said it in the beginning, but you have no idea if I if I didn't watch it, if, if I didn't discover John Korea or Active Self Protection uh, channel. I really don't think the outcome would have been the same, to, honestly. You know, um, you made my I, I would have never known how to react and what to do after the fact. You know, mm -hmm. I would have never known until I, you know, unless I actually take some serious defense classes, self-defense classes to know what to do now. Since you know, Hayes, a, a weapon was fired, and it's a serious thing i mean it's every like you said every every round that leaves your your gun you are responsible for you yeah. know um, did you, you know last thing did you get into any trouble at work Is, did, did metro pcs know that you were carrying or did that cause you any grief they knew i was carrying they knew i was carrying before um but of course the i mean i'm not the troublemaker kind so they didn't you know they yeah. didn't care you know um they knew what kind of position i was in i was a manager for metro so I may have been, you know, a target. I actually originally thought that I was the main target of it because I don't work in that store. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. Wow. So you just happened to be there on that day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. So I usually go around, you know, the stores and make sure everything's good to go and um, do all the paperwork is good. And I, you know, st I stay around with the, with, the, um, with the employees and help them train them and whatnot and i think uh, the information i got later is that they seen her there by herself i just happened to go there after man that sounds like divine providence to me bro that sounds like the hand of god was on you to be there at that time yeah i, I mean maybe you, i don't know i'm not god or or i don't have that kind of you know future futuristic look but i don't know if she would have made it if if, if she was Dude. by herself. Well, and, and, you know, I appreciate your encouragement. Uh, so, I mean, saying, Hey, you know, that, that the lessons made, made it different for you and helped you on that day are huge. Let me say, I didn't save your life, man. You saved your life. You know, you did everything that needed to do. The fact that we at active self protection were able to help you do, you made my day uh, and gave me great encouragement. So thank you for that. It, it means a lot. And it reminds me that what we do actually uh, saves lives. So thank you. Uh, dude, uh, legit. And of course, I'd also, if you want to come, it's a drive for you, but um, we have our national conference at the end of September in Kansas, in Manhattan, Kansas. And if, if you can handle getting there, it's on me, bro. I'd love to have you as my guest. I really do appreciate it, John. I really, really do. You have no idea. Um, now, with a little I, baby at home, it might be kind of hard to get away for the weekend. I get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Um, but, you know, my wife has been very, very supportive of the situation. Um, we didn't even tell her about this. That When that happened, she didn't know until I got home. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so, so uh, we actually... All that stuff, 
Yeah, I ended up breaking my fast that day. You know, the first day um, of Ramadan fasting, I ended up breaking my fasting in the precinct, in in the special the special operations unit. So <laughs> it was just crazy, you know. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, my friend, thank you so much for spending the time. I think I think you did a great job. I think you know you said okay, so I got the gun out fast, and that first shot I didn't aim, uh, and so you got Fibsa. You know, you missed him course that first hit is what counts and it's when you hit him that that everything changed right yeah but I think you did a really excellent job of moving where you were and not popping up in the same place and i think that really probably saved your life if you'd have popped up in the same place twice i think that very likely chance that uh, the outcome could have been different uh, and so, so yeah. and you stayed in the fight like i mean this this fight went on a lot longer than most gunfights that i see because yes. of the cover you know the concealment stuff and so when you finally got a shot and you put one in him, man, um, really excellent work. So, I mean, I, you know, my analysis of the overall thing, um, I, really, really good work. And, and man, I, I shoot, if every gunfight that I ever saw went that way, we would be in a different world. So, man, kudos to you, bro. You covered your ass. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much. And keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing great. You're doing fantastic, honestly. I will, man. Thank you so much for coming on the channel, and I appreciate you.